Greetings, YouTubians, and welcome back to Wayne Sharp World, where today we're taking a look at the final installment of what we'll call the, the Delo series. Today we're taking a look at an absolutely gorgeous Koenig Arius. As I said, this is the last of three pieces that a very awesome viewer by the name of Delo sent in to me to review on the channel. And man, we did save the best for last. This is an absolutely gorgeous, stunning piece that I have a lot of good things to say about. Before I go any further, though, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. If you like what you see, please do me a huge favor. Hit that subscribe button, follow along, and I will continue to bring you the content. Now, let's take a look at some overall specifications on this knife right here. We have a, an overall length of 8.5 inches with a blade length coming in at 3.5 inches. A cutting edge that is slightly more than 3.5 inches due to the uh, very nice amount of belly on the blade. We have a blade width of 1 and 3 eighths inches with a blade thickness of 0.13 inches. And this blade steel you're looking at is CTS XHP with a gorgeous drop point design and absolutely stunning. And I mean, I got a lot to say about this grind, but this is an incredible hollow grind with a handle length coming in at five inches, a handle thickness at 0.56 inches, a handle width coming in at 1.21 inches, and this handle material, well, first you have the car, the titanium, but then you have copper dust carbon fiber that is just absolutely insane. The camera really doesn't do it justice. You really do have to, to have to see this piece in person to fully, fully appreciate it. But man, it it, it really is something. This is a very, very uh, hard to hard to find, extremely rare areas. Um, we have a user of a tip-up, right-hand only carry weight. Again, I, I want to say this is coming in around three and a half-ish ounces. Still have not got the batteries and the scale, but um, as you can see, there is a lot of milling, even in the carbon fiber. Um, considering the size of this knife, this is a surprisingly light knife. And the price is not light because what you're getting here... Um, I had trouble even finding the actual price of this knife. Knife, I I'm willing to bet it's it's got to be somewhere in the seven to eight hundred dollar range, possibly flirting with nine hundred with this with this incredible mirror polish and this copper dust carbon fiber. Um, anyone that knows Koenig knows this is a this is a pretty darn rare piece. So that would uh, that's kind of my guess in the price, anywhere from. 700 I would probably say it's closer to $900 though. Now let's do some size comparisons for anyone that hasn't seen an actual Arius uh, up against some other models here. And since we have one of the most amazing USA made knives ever, we're going to keep this a uh, all USA party. We're going to go with the TRM Atom as well as the Hinderer XM18. And right there I think that uh, gives you guys everything you need to know. Uh, very good size comparison right there. But we'll do one more for all you Spyderco nuts out there because everybody loves a good spider so Spyderco size comparison. We have the Shaman as well as your PM2. So there you go. I think that uh, I think that definitely does it. Very close in overall length to the PM2. Maybe just a hair shorter. For probably for the better, everyone know that the P PM2 has a pretty big handle on it. The Arig Arius, Arig Arius is a very, uh, very, very well balanced. Let's say from the, the the knife to handle ratio. And now let's God, let's get into it. I don't even know where to begin, so we'll just do the normal. We'll start with this blade. That this polish. I mean, you can, my God, you can see my face. You guys you can see my face on this polish it is absolutely amazing it has it's not a it is a mere polish but you can see just a little bit of stone wash under the mere polish which i think is pretty badass um just swedges that i didn't notice until i looked a little harder even the swedges up here are hollow ground they're not just flat swedges they have a hollow grind to them which is just incredible um, you have, a, like I said, the hollow grind on the actual blade. This thing is just, I've never seen a more impressive hollow grind than this. It's, it's really incredible. 
we're talking right behind the edge, 16 thousandths. But then you go even an eighth of an inch up the blade. I mean, you're talking, you go up to like here on the blade and you're still talking 21 thousandths, 21 thousandths up to where my nail is. And I wish it's really hard to get the right depth to show you guys that, but it is just absolutely insane how thin this blade is ground. I mean, it, it it's definitely something different than anything I've ever seen on on any any production knife. I I admittedly never held a true custom in hand, but this uh, this puts every other production piece I've ever held to to shame when it comes to details and especially this grind. I mean, this grind there's absolutely no comparison whatsoever from any other piece I've ever held. I'm just going to keep this nice and shiny here, but just absolutely incredible. You have a very nice cutout on the blade that works very well for deployment, and it also just looks really, really sleek with the nice milling back here. Very smooth, sleek lines. Just, just gorgeous. I mean, I really don't have... I do have one little um, thing to point out about this flipper tab here. And it doesn't, it, it actually has more to do with the action. So we will, we'll cover that more when we get to the action. Um, but it obviously, as you can see, works phenomenally well. Um, there was one little improvement that could be made that can actually, it actually was made. And you're going to see that later in the video when I have a comparison of uh, <laughs> my new areas that I was actually just able to get. But let's, let's finish this knife here because I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself because there's so much to take in with this knife. Um, it's it's kind of overwhelming if you've never held something to this this level of quality. Um, when it comes to the handles and ergos, I was actually not expecting it to feel that well in hand because for there's something about this this little swoop right here and the swell down here. I I just didn't. I, I felt like my my middle finger and my index finger would be kind of crunched here, and I didn't think that would feel good. But it feels great because you feel you feel like you're holding it way back here. That's what it feels like. But you're actually you have it up in your hand and you're you're choked all the way up, and it just feels phenomenal. There's zero hot spots. Um, it just falls right into the molding of your hand. The way the the wider swell area down here works is just absolutely fantastic. The clip was also a very nice surprise. It's so low profile and just, I mean, look at it. It doesn't look like it has a lot of ramp, but it went right over my jeans. No problem whatsoever. Just no complaints. No complaints whatsoever. Uh, very, very surprised with that pocket clip. I thought it looked awesome. And then I noticed even like the little details, like the little uh, cutout down on the frame lock area. And it just it goes so well with the clip. I was just waiting for that clip to you know have be a, a pain to ride over the my, my pocket or something, give me some type of fit, and there was just absolutely nothing. Um, the precision in the milling all over the place is just fantastic. And it, I got to give Delo some props here. You guys look at this pocket clip. You see that it's it's got some uh it's got some beauty scratches on it. Um, this is not a safe queen. Delo carries this piece so. Delo, man, you, <laughs> you, uh, you ride in style, my man. That is a uh, pretty awesome. I, I, I love seeing a knife that is this incredible. That doesn't just sit in a Pelican box or a safe. It's actually carried, and they should be, as I will mine. But I thought that was pretty cool to see. Another thing that's very nice up top here is the uh, milling on the outside that makes it much more comfortable when you're going to deploy the blade because you have to. Uh, push it out and your finger goes right in here and there's there's no there, there, there's nothing uncomfortable like there is kind of with a uh, a hinderer when you push it you, you're hitting all this jimping that I, I mean everyone knows i'm a fan of jimping but you definitely feel that and you don't feel it at all with this so that is very very nice and worth pointing out now when we get to the action on this it's I mean, it's it's everything. It, it it's not completely false shutty, but I'm starting to realize that I like knives that are more glassy, like this. Just a just a couple little a, cu a couple little you know shakes, and it shuts on you. That's actually what I prefer because I have really done a number on my thumb lately, closing super drop shutty blades, 
and you just don't have to worry about it with this one. One, because of the flipper tab, um, which now that we're in the action, the flipper tab here, as you can see, this is pointed out a little more. It, it has a hook to it. Now that hook right here, along with the one screw on the lock bar insert, is an indicator that this is a Gen 2 Arius. And with that being said, I will bring in the card for it here. Um, this is the Certificate of Authenticity, has a birth date of 8 14 17. Um, so this is a Gen 2 area. So this is not a 3 or 4. And I think that's important to note because some people may have the idea, if you don't know Koenig very well, that the, the level of quality or improvement from from the second generation to the fourth generation is massive. And that really couldn't be more false because what you have here is an absolutely excellent, excellent, excellent piece. Zero flaws. The only real improvement to, that can be made that actually, in my opinion, that you feel and notice is the flipper tab because this flipper tab here, it, it, it sticks out a little. It doesn't hurt and it still allows you, you can push it out extremely well or you can flip it out just as fine. But what they did, now, insert uh, the piece I just got. This is uh, my Koenig Arias that I was able to score off DLT trading. You can see the difference here between these two. And that's the biggest difference right there. It's just that flipper tab. Just a flipper tab. So this is a little more... Uh, it does feel better on the finger deploying the blade, but that's really it. When you're when you're comparing everything else, everything else, I mean, you can see the lock bar screw is up higher on this, um, but that's really it. If you have any reservations of a chance to get a Gen 2 and you're like, oh, I don't want to, the Gen 4 is a lot better, I'm here to tell you there's not a big difference. Um, I absolutely love my Gen 4. I love the milling. I kind of wish I had these carbon fiber scales, though. But uh, I, I love everything about this. I, I mean, I'm absolutely... I, I don't think a production knife gets any better. I've held a lot now to where this easily takes the cake of production knives for me. I'm blown away. Um, but I am just as blown away with this piece. If I had the opportunity to buy this before I had this, I would buy this. Because it is that good. The differences are not that huge. Um, obviously, the, the mere polish and the specialty scale, that's something different. That's not an improvement. That's more of a style or a, a model change. It's not a design change. And when it comes to design improvements and changes, the differences just aren't that drastic. So I, I, I want to tell and emphasize that to everybody. Um, don't be intimidated or worried about that because this feels just as good as this. It really does. I, I, I'm blown away with the level of quality and um, execution between something from 2017 and 2021. Absolutely phenomenal. Now, just going back to this real quick, the uh, the action, as you can see, it it it, it just falls shut. Um, my overall thoughts is it is everything I thought it would be. This was a grill knife for a reason. Um, I would probably say this is the first true grail knife I've ever purchased. Um, I don't plan on purchasing a lot of them because I had to sell a lot of knives. And uh, luckily, I actually sold enough to where I didn't pay for any of this out of pocket. I mean, technically I did because all those knives that I sold were out of pocket. But um, they were knives that I just had in the collection that I, I weren't using that much and uh, wasn't doing a whole lot with. So... I couldn't be happier, but I thought it was worth comparing a Gen 4 to a Gen 2 and just, again, it, it emphasize the fact that you don't lose anything in quality. Slight, slight improvement changes that are nice. I will say I do like this flipper tab a lot more, but other than that, I mean, you are pretty much getting the same thing right here. It really is everything. If you've questioned whether or not an Arius is worth it, um, my opinion, if you're a true enthusiast or collector and or collector, whatever you are, if you're big into knives, you will absolutely appreciate this. If you're new into knives and you don't know a big difference, you might look at it and say, whoa, 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 way too much. You have to know what you're looking at. You have to know what you're handling. Um, I'm Again, I'm blown away. I, I couldn't be more impressed with this. I couldn't be more grateful for D'Lo for trusting me and sending this along to me. One last shout out. Thank you so much, Dilo. I, I really, really greatly appreciate this. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you took some things away from it. And uh, if you haven't, if you haven't been able to tell, my overall thoughts are absolutely through the roof on this. If you if you're thinking about it and you're on the fence, go for it. Go for it. Wait for your moment. Wait for your chance to get it. Jump on it. The Koenig Arius is the real deal. And in my humble opinion, it is the best production knife you can get on the market. Um, that That's just where I sit. That's where I stand. And I, I'm going to be really, really impressed if anyone ever changes my mind on that. But could not be happier. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you have an absolutely phenomenal weekend. And until the next one, I'm out.